Okay, so hello and welcome. This is grade 11 and 12 final examination revision looking at this section on trigonometry. Now, in order to start looking at trigonometry, I want to introduce you to two things. One is what are the rules for mastering trigonometry and two, building a summary sheet because your summary sheet will be your reference as we go along. Right, so before we tackle the first question, uh, I'm going to bring up a whiteboard. And there we go. Okay, so mastering trigonometry. How do we do that? Let's talk about mastery. How do we master trigonometry? Well, there's really two things you need to cater for. The first thing is foresight, right? That's number one. And the second thing is practice. Now, as you go through the section with me over the next 15 to 20 videos, you will notice that foresight and practice work in sync with one another. What is foresight? Foresight is when you look at a trig question and you say, well, I'm going to do this, do that, do that, do that, do that, and that's my answer. That's without even writing things down. That's what you want to build up. You want to start looking at the questions and seeing the solutions. That is what I mean by foresight. Or if you're not seeing the entire solution, at least you want to see what is the next two or three steps. If I do this, what will this be? If I do that, what will that be? You start seeing what will work and what won't work. But how do you do this? The only, only way to build up foresight and to develop your foresight is through practice. And that's what we want to do. So as we go through the videos, you will see that these two work in sync with one another. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part is we need to build something called a summary sheet, right? Oops. We need to build something called a summary sheet. Now the summary sheet that we will start to look at, okay, that's sort of an underlined thing. Uh, the summary sheet that we want to talk about is what are we going to put on our summary sheet? Well, I'll tell you now. For starters, start putting these down. Uh, start putting down Sokartoa, right? Another way to remember it is some old hags cannot always hide their old age. There we go. Right. Or so Kartoa. Now this refers to the trig ratios that we find inside right angle triangles. And that's really what trigonometry is dealing with. Okay. As you know that this is the opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is equal to sine of theta is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. This is the adjacent over hypotenuse is equal to cos of some the angle theta. And then this one here is equal to uh, tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, right, and that's for a given triangle. If we assume that our triangle looks like this, let's just get a triangle there and let's pray that it it gives me something that's right. Well, it's not working, so we're going to have to construct our own. Okay, and let's get a black pin going there. If this is my angle theta, this angle will be 90 minus theta. That would be a right angle over there. This would be opposite to theta. This would be the adjacent and this would be the hypotenuse. Well, that's that's the very, very basics, right? So I'm assuming you've already got that somewhere in your grade 9 and 10 knowledge. So the next thing we want to do is we actually want to say, well, I've got that out of the way. Now let me start building up the next part of my summary sheet. It's going to be the cost diagram. Now the cost diagram tells us which of which is positive and negative ratios in the different quadrants. So the first one here is going to be A, which means all. This is going to be S for sine, in other words, sine of theta. And this is going to be uh, tan, and this is going to be cos. There we go. Now the other thing is, on my summary sheet, I'm going to have theta. This is going to be 180 minus theta. This one's going to be 180 plus theta. This here is going to be 360 
minus theta. And what is this? This thing here is the reduction formula. Right. Now, each of these have their own purpose. Cost has its own purpose. Reduction formula has got its own purpose. Um, so Cartoa, some old hags cannot always hide their old age. Uh, these, these things on the summary sheet each have their own um, reason for being there. So the next thing I want to look at is that's reduction formula. This is cost diagram. This is the basic ratios. If I pull up something new now, I'm going to say the second part. I'm continuing with my summary sheet. Right. Call it part two. Right. This one I will call part one. Right. So on part two, what I want to do is I want to say, okay, part two is going to look at something else as well. We're going to insert, uh, let's make that blue. And there again, I've got my set of axes. And I'm going to say this year is 90 minus theta. This is 90 plus theta. This is 270 minus theta. And this is 270 plus theta. What you see over here now is what we will call co-ratios or co-functions. Also called co-functions. Right. So now I've got a few things. I've got my cost diagram, I've got my reduction formula, I've got this, and I've got this. Now, you shouldn't just be watching me do this. You should be writing it down. You should be making your own summary sheet. As you can see, I've got mine on paper here. Uh, very, very rough, but you should have yours as well. Okay, and that will be your reference sheet as we go through the work. Now, the next thing I want to give you is rules, right? The first few rules I want to give you here are the following. When we simplify angles, rule number one, these are the three never, never, nevers. And I know some people would say have positive statements, but I'm going to tell you the aim of the rules. Aim is to get an angle less than 90 degrees. That's what you really want. The aim is to get the angle less than 90 degrees. That's what you really want. Okay. So rule number one. Let's change the color of the pen. Let's make it black. Rule number one. Never work with angle Okay, let's write out the word in full. Never work with an angle greater than 90 degrees. That's why we have this aim. The aim of everything we do when we simplify trigonometric ratios, identities, etc., we want to get an angle less than 90 degrees. That's our main aim in life here. Okay, the second part is we don't work with negative angles. Let me just say, oops, no negative angles. And then the third one is going to be no angles greater than 360. Now, now you may think that's a little bit redundant because, because I really said don't work with angles greater than 90. And we're going to tackle each of these individually. Now, as I go through this, I want you to say, how do we solve? How do we get angles less than 90? How do we get rid of negative angles? How do we get rid of angles that are greater than 360 degrees? And that's, uh, that's for the first part of the lesson. So that's the first part of building your summary sheet. Um, in the next part, I want you to go over each one of these and say what it is we want to do. So let's tackle our first question, right? Our first type of example. And then we're going to see what can we do when an angle is greater than 90 degrees. What do we do if the angle is negative, And what do we do when the angles are greater than 360 degrees?